Well, it's the first week of the school holidays and between the showers, I've been doing plenty of gadding about, mostly looking for, for mushrooms I can eat and stuff like that. And I've been at a few locations in South Pennines. And when I've been out, I've been filming them. So what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to try and sort of mesh them together to, to make, I don't know, like a, a bit of a, a wildlife, local themed film, um, like, like a medley. I don't know if it'd be any good. I'll, I'll put it together, see what it looks like. And, and if, if I'm reasonably happy with it, I, I, might, I might share it. Right, well we're in about the last third of July now and it's been a pretty wet month on it so wet month, sort of mildest weather, it seems a good time to start my 2023 uh, fungal forays um, but I'm on, on my local patch here in South Pennines where there's a nice sort of mixture of habitats where I can look for stuff so I'm just getting a bit of shelter under this tree and then we'll carry on up the valley and check out some of the places where I found stuff in the past. Now I'm finding a few of these at this location and I'm sort of 99% sure of the ID. Well, there it is. I'll just pick it up and show you. Now this one here that I hope you can see is one I think is called a blusher. Um, and it usually has speckles on like a fly agaric. White gills. I don't know if you've seen that on other, also a skirt. I've just dropped this so it's fell into bits. Now the blusher, by all accounts, is a reasonable sort of edible. I thought there was someone coming there, it felt like a muppet. Um, unfortunately, there's a very, very similar species called panther cap, which is deadly. Now I don't think this is panther cap. Panther, panther cap is quite rare. And there are a couple of sort of key diagnoses I can't quite remember. I'm even more sure this is a blusher. I don't know whether it's showing on that bit. Probably not, it's a bit white that, isn't it? But there's a pink sort of blush into the stem. Uh, oh, there, there's, a, there's a, good, a good example there. I don't know if you can see that near my finger. Anyway, so I'm pretty sure this is a blusher. Uh, I'm just debating whether to take it with me. I don't know what to do. I'll have a think about it. Back under trees for a bit of shelter, very showery today. I've left uh, the, the first sort of wooded area and I've sort of headed my way higher up the valley now, becoming more sort of moor edge pasture. And one tool I always find when I'm looking for mushrooms is a pair of binoculars, especially in open country. And I've been scanning on the hillside up here and I think I've seen potentially some field mushrooms. Uh, even from afar with the bins, some of them look past the best, but yeah, we'll see as we get a bit higher up. Well, I did say I found some field mushrooms from afar. Look at these whoppers, like dinner plates. All the gills are black though, so past the best. Actually, not all past the best, look at this one. I'm going to take that with me. Look at this whopper. I can't even fit this in my mushroom bag. Look at the size of that beast. That'll keep me going a while. Right, well, I'm not far from home now. I think that was a success. I didn't get much in the way of different species. I mean, I've got a bundle of horse mushrooms. I didn't end up taking the blusher in the end. I knew it were a blusher, I knew it were a panther cat, but them similarities, there's just a little niggling doubt at the back of my mind and 
you should always uh, play it safe in response to that. Uh, so I'm quite happy with what I've got though. And I've driven just over the border into Yorkshire, I don't know, 20 minutes, half an hour drive. And I'm in a wooded valley near Ebden Bridge. And it's a place I came last, last sort of autumn looking for, looking for edible mushrooms. And I didn't find a lot, but what I did find were quite good. So I've come a bit earlier in the season. Just heard a swallow. Um, we've had a lot of rain lately. In fact, the last couple of days, it's pretty much rained solid. So I'm hoping the, the, the wet weather, the pretty mild earth temperatures is... Uh, I don't know, sprung some mushrooms into life. Me and this little house here that we're packed, well, little house, it's like a converted barn on the edge of the moors, have a bit of history. When I first used to walk this way, I don't know, late 80s, early 90s, it would derelict. And the footpath went right through the farmyard. I used to like walking through there, it was a lovely big old stone water trough. Um, anyway, someone bought it and decided to do it up. And one time when I come through, there was a sign on one at fence posts, uh, a planning application to divert the footpath away from the, from the yard past the building. Oh, just things like that just really irritate me, so I objected. Hello. Anyway, with regards to the objection, I, I lost the battle. I, I, I stalled things for quite a bit though. I held, I held up the process. So that brought a little, a little amount of satisfaction, but yeah, I didn't win in the end and the path were convert, uh, uh, rerouted. Old sluggies beat me to this one, I don't know what it is. Well, that was just a load of bob. I hardly saw a single fungus so I'll walk. Um, I'm not far back to that car now, so I can't see. See me finding any more today. I don't know why really, maybe, maybe I'm a little bit early. Certainly a nice pond here, I can't remember that. Nice lot of slugs as well, maybe that's, uh, maybe that's played a part. So I'm in a locally sort of park today, but it's got quite a large wooded area. And again, it's one of my regular haunts where I come looking for mushrooms. This one's just, just in Oldham. Well, look at the size of that. It's not an edible, unless you want to get as high as a kite, but that's my first fly of Garrick at you. And we're still at still in July. What I've also just found is my first little penny bun of the year, little tiny sep. Slug damaged again though. But a little bit more encouraging than uh, things so far. I think I found one here called Red Cracking Belit. I should mention at this point, one resource, an online resource I use that is absolutely superb is a website and a series of YouTube videos 
and it's called Wild Food UK. And they're based in Herefordshire and the YouTube videos especially are just a fantastic resource when it comes to IDing mushrooms. Right, well I'm sat in one of our probably best moor edge pastures round here in the, in the parish where I live um, and it's managed in such a way that all these wild flowers are left to flourish and then when they've set seed it'll get grazed over the winter and then an opportunity for them to grow back will it'll take place uh, the following year. But yeah, it's brilliant. It's got all the classic indicator species of very old pasture. There's yellow rattle, eyebright, ernut, red clover. I reckon if you had a proper good scout in here, you'd, you'd find some, some really good stuff. It's private land, unfortunately. I'm doing a slight little trespass here. I'm not far from a public right away. I, I have had a little bit of interaction with a farmer who, who farms this, this area. And he seems an all right sort of bloke, so I like to think if I come across him, He'd, he'd sort of <laughs> understand my motives. Oh, I am an happy chap now. I've just come across a, a wild flower called Greater Burnet, and it's one I associate with more of the limestone areas of the Orchard Dales, really. I know one other location in Rochdale. Found another horse mushroom. I can't even say it. <laughs> like a tongue twister. Just found another horse mushroom again. This will be coming with me. That little hill above my finger there is Windy Hill. And Windy Hill is uh, a hot spot for Mesolithic finds. Uh, lots of flints have been recovered from up there in the past. You have no chance now though. It's long grown over, the erosion patches have uh, all grassed over now, you won't find notes up there. I think in my, all my flint hunting days, I think I only ever found two small pieces of debitage, i.e. sort of waste bits, and that, that a bit 1990s I think. Now this part of the Python Valley is an area that intrigues me more than most. This flat area that I'm walking to, a farm called Norman Hill once sat here, now on the ground there's very little trace, um, no not much at all and I don't know when it were last occupied based on things that I've seen on old maps and stuff, I'm reckoning about 150 years ago, maybe a, a bit less than that, certainly the end of the 19th century. One thing I would love to see is, is an old photo of it, oh that would really make me day that. I've been around local studies library, now, now doing the local history groups, nothing. It's a shame because a lot of the farms in the valley that, that have long gone, you, you can still access old photos. Not this one. Here's the old roofing flags, probably from the local Aslindon flags that were used for that purpose. You can even see all there where they'd have been nailed on. Oh, lids come off. Mind you, I, I don't bother with stem. These are bloody awesome. There's lots here. Um, I'll probably take this one. I, I can't get many more in the bag and, and there's still loads left. So I'm still leaving uh, plenty for an opportunity to shed the spores and procreate or whatever mushrooms do. Do, do you like how I've arranged it? So I've like got some flowers over my shoulder so it makes me look like a, a good gardener. Anyway, I hope that was okay. It took me a while to sort of compile that so it made some sort of coherent sense. Um, but yeah, when I, when I put it together, it, it, it seemed reasonable. Um, I, might, I might do another odd one of them along the way between now and autumn, de depending on what sort of things I come across and what sort of things I get up to. But the next one will be a wild camp. So as usual, thanks for watching. 
look after yourselves and have a great summer. Actually, when this goes out, summer will be long gone.